Hello, everybody. This is Ian Beckles, and welcome back to In the Trenches. Uh, we've been getting used to Victory Mondays here as of late. Um, I, when I say as of late, I mean the previous two years. Uh, I think we're starting to get accustomed to these Mondays, and it's uh, dreary Mondays, unfortunately. Listen, our Buccaneers are not that talented of a football team. I, I, I wish I could sit here and tell you that they're better than they are. They're not. Okay, that, that's I don't even know which other way to, to, to break it down to you. Um, this Buccaneer team, I would say, where do you think our Buccaneers are excelling, Buck fans? Where do you think they're good? Quarterback's not playing that well right now. Is it his fault ultimately? Yes, because he's the quarterback. Not because he's playing poorly, but yes, because he's the quarterback. All right? Byron Leftwich's play calling has not impressed anybody, to my, to my knowledge, I mean, I had somebody hit me up here. If anybody wants to hit me up and email me, it's ianbeckles at radioinfluence.com. Basically saying that Byron Leftwich is being predictable and, and blah, blah, blah. And so I don't want to get too much into the predictability because there's some teams that are predictable and still jam it down your throat, okay? We know what a lot of teams are going to do, but if you're, pre if you're predictable and you're still good at what you do, you still can't stop it. The Buccaneers are not that much different than they were the previous two years they're just playing better they were playing better then than they are now you know i mean mike evans dropping that ball if you think that's the reason why the bucks lost you didn't watch the whole football game okay the bucks go up seven nothing they scored three points the rest of the game coming off a terrible Steeler loss where they get their heads kicked in and you scored three points. So I don't want to hear about one drop in the first quarter of a game being the reason why a team lost because that's nonsensical, okay? The Buccaneers are playing against the Carolina Panthers team who uh, have an intern coach who just traded their only good player in Christian McCaffrey. Uh, uh, Robbie Anderson just went away because he talked his way out of there and he's probably in, better, in a better situation because of it. Those guys are ready to start tanking. And we lost 21-3 to a team that's about to start tanking? P.J. Walker, why, who I think was a, a World League XFL guy, I don't know. But I tell you what, at times we're shredding our defense. Shredding our Buccaneer defense. And for us Buccaneer fans that remember the day, the heydays, and the heydays were only a couple years ago. And then when you go back to the Monty Kiffin years, what happens if a Monty Kiffin defense goes up against either a, that a Pickett Steelers team or that Carolina team right there with, with, with P.J. Walker? They don't score any points. That's the way it goes. So we can sit here and say that our Buccaneers are underachieving. They're not. They're just not that damn good. We don't have any rhythm offensively. When I mean no rhythm, I mean none. I don't even know. Like, if you're a USF Bull fan, and it's, it's a shame because it's all in one town. It's, it's like I'm piling on. But when you watch the USF Bulls, even when they're successful, you don't even really know what they're doing. That's what the Buccaneers are doing right now. What are they trying to get accomplished? If I ask you as a Buccaneer fan, what do the Bucs do well? What are you going to tell me the Bucs do well right now? Do we run the football well? Do we protect the passer? Are we a deep throwing team? Do we rush the, the passer well? Do we stop the run well? Are we well coached? Okay, have you said yes to any of those uh, yet? And I, I'm not even close to saying yes to any of them. So you want to know why the Bucks aren't good? First of all, they're not playing well. And I, I just got some news for everybody. This is breaking news. We're not that talented. Okay? The Buccaneers lost three interior offensive linemen. There's only three interior offensive linemen. There's only three. And they lost three. They lost their tight end, who did everything last year. Rob Gronkowski was 90% of what happened at tight end last year. They lost him. And what did they do to, to, to replace that? Gadecki's in and out. I mean, they, they took Leverett out, put Leverett in, in and out, which I don't know if that's helping. If Gadecki's the future, leave him in there. All right? Hainsey at center. He's holding his own for the most part. We all know we're better with Jensen. You know, Mason is holding his own, not hearing his name too much. But as a whole, our offensive line is not that damn great. Third and one, fourth and one, are you, are you confident that that team's going to push somebody off the ball? You remember two weeks ago when Brady had that sneak where he lost a yard? There's just not a lot of, there's not a lot of oomph going on. Defensively, 
But we lost Dominican Sue to Hicks, and I don't know what who he is. Uh, and then you, you lose JPP, who we have to run into this week in, in uh, Baltimore, for JTS, uh, Tryon Trianka, who real talk, people. If he didn't play, would you know? If, if Tryon Trianka didn't play, would you know? And I got to give you another name that I had to really look up to see if he played. And this is real. At the end of the game, I was like, I don't remember Shaq Barrett's name. And I went back and I looked and Shaq Barrett played 50 snaps or 30 something snaps. I didn't hear his name the whole time. So where are we? I'll tell you where we are. We're at a point now where we have to start questioning whether Jason Light, the job he did in the off season, but what we lost and we tried to replace it with is not working right now. And Buccaneer fans, be ready for a new era. I'm going to say this right now. A new era started yesterday when the Bucs walked out, walked off that Carolina Panthers field and got their asses whooped. A new era started. The Bucs are starting to think about tomorrow and not today. And that's unfortunate. It, it has to be that way. You think the Buccaneers are a team that should be going after players or trading players right now? What do you think? They're very high in the cap, and you're getting your wig split against bad football teams? You just lost four of five, and now you got to go play the Ravens and then play the Rams? Good luck with that. Good, good luck with that. Football's wonky this year. It's not normal. It's It's... First of all, I just don't think the product is that good. And crazy teams are beating other teams, but we're not one of them. Look at our record and look who we've beaten, who we lost to. It just, it's completely nonsensical. And when you look at the offseason, what the Buccaneers did in the offseason, I mean, Rudolph? Who the hell is Rudolph? I don't know who he is either. All right? So we brought in somebody who replaces Rob Gronkowski, and I don't. I think he's caught one ball this year. How is that replacing Rob Gronkowski? It ain't. It's not. And listen, you want to know the biggest difference between last year and this year? It's the trenches. You know, this this podcast is called In the Trenches. The Bucks aren't good in the trenches. They're not. They don't rush the passer. They don't protect the quarterback. They don't do anything particularly well. And the guys we brought in that were supposed to be the savers, Russell Gage and the Rudolphs and all these, they ain't saving squat. They really aren't. And when you're looking around and look at some teams where people say, oh, we're more talented than the Jets and we're more talented than the Giants. No, we're not. You know why? Because in the trenches, they're better than us. We're not that good in the trenches, people. I mean, Julio Jones, I, I'm tired of hearing their name and I don't even want to see him dressed anymore. Why would we want to see Julio Jones dressed now? To do what? To watch him do what? Go down with the ship? Pull the plug on Julio Jones. And it's to the point now where they got to be thinking about tomorrow, all right? And that's a sad state of affair because once you start talking about tomorrow and your quarterback is 45 years old, I can't imagine the locker room today. I can't imagine a Buccaneer locker room, but it's not good. And you know what's not going to happen in Tom Brady's watch? You're not going to start talking about tomorrow under Tom Brady's watch. So I'm just going to prepare people for the worst, okay? I'm going to prepare you guys for the worst, because I, I was saying this two weeks ago, we're about to go through a change and we lost to two bad football teams. And and listen, guys and gals, those are bad football teams. The, the Steelers will not beat a whole lot of teams and Carolina's not gonna beat a whole lot of teams, okay? And I watched the Steelers again yesterday, eh. okay? Carolina's not gonna beat a lot of teams, they're not gonna. And they beat the crap out of the Buccaneers yesterday. Like I say, football's crazy, but it comes down to having good football players. And the Buccaneers don't have as many good football players as other teams now. They just don't. It's a changing of the guards, kind of, in football. And everything's cyclical. And the Buccaneers sucked for 10, 12 years. Then they Brady came, and we are good for a little bit. Get ready. Get ready because a lot of times when you win a Super Bowl or you have a little bit of success, you sell your soul to the devil or whoever. And I think we sold our soul. And I have a funny feeling it's going to go backwards, unfortunately. All right. 
So I just it's you couldn't be sadder than to lose to two teams in a row that you were ten point favorites over. It, it can't be much sadder than that. And going forward, nobody thinks that they're going to beat Baltimore or the Rams. I don't, anyways. They could say, hey, they could they could trip me out and all of a sudden turn things around. But you know, you don't see it. I don't see it, and you don't see it. And by the way, I did uh, get removed from Beckles and Retcher on 95.3 WDAE, so this is going to be the way to listen to me. I'm going to start doing podcasts on Monday in the trenches, and we're going to start doing some shows on Friday as well to get you guys and gals ready for uh, the games on the weekend. But um, but this is the way from now on uh, in the trenches, and make sure you're listening to all the other podcasts as well. And uh, if you ever want to hit me up, it's Ian Beckles at RadioInfluence.com. And make sure you uh, follow me on all the social medias so and make sure you know what's going on. Uh, I'm mostly an Instagram person, Ian underscore Beckles. Uh, give me a follow and there uh, will be some cool stuff on there. So I appreciate you guys and guys listening every single week. Um, I use these podcasts to vent. And now that I don't have the radio show, this is going to be a whole lot of venting going on because this is my only outlet. And... Um, after that Buccaneer game yesterday, I certainly needed an outlet, that is for sure. Hope it turns out a little bit different this week. Uh, the Buccaneers play Thursday night against uh, the, the Ravens, and I, I wouldn't bet a red cent on them at that point. So I'll be back on Friday breaking things down, and hopefully uh, the Buccaneers figure out a way to turn this whole thing around. You want a bright point? I, I think they're really still above right, right there at first place. I mean, that's, that's the bright point. I mean, we might suck at the end of the year and be 8-9 and nine and still mess around and make the playoffs. But, uh, you, you know, Buccaneer fans, that's not what we want. That's not what we want. But I appreciate you guys and guys listening in every single week. Have a wonderful week, and please be safe. Peace out.